This podcast and the following message are brought to you by Smart Pixel. Turn your website's anonymous visitors into engaged customers. Smart Pixel turns your anonymous website visitors into fully identified first party consumer data. When this match and identification takes place, Smart Pixel can return up to 300 attributes on the consumer. You get name, postal address, email, gender, and date of birth, plus more specific details like home ownership, vehicle ownership, political party affiliation, presence of children in the household, and many more. Smart Pixel, real time information about your website visitors, easy to install, and fully GDPR and CCPA compliant. Find out more by going to autoconverse.com forward slash smart pixel. That's www.autoconverse.com forward slash S-M-A-R-T-P-I-X-L. And thank you. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is facing calls to resign. Republican Representative Mike Collins of Georgia said on the House floor today that Pete Buttigieg has shown that he is unfit to lead the Department of Transportation and must resign immediately. Collins added, from his first day in office, he has been more focused on diversity training and identity politics than on building and maintaining America's transportation system. He has abandoned his department's mission of improving the safety, technology, and efficiency of our infrastructure in favor of promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. Buttigieg continues to face backlash over his handling of the East Palestine train derailment back on February 4th. He finally visited on February 23rd. Collins added that Buttigieg took 10 days to acknowledge this incident and three weeks to show up and support the community, and that as Ohioans fled their homes and worried about their health, the Secretary of Transportation was on TV whining about too many white people in construction industries. Fox News reports that there is also an ongoing probe into his use of private jets. That was the Daily Signal podcast responding to calls for Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg to resign over his mishandling of the East Palestine train derailment in February that resulted in massive toxic chemical spills throughout the city, causing residents to evacuate and now potentially dealing with health anomalies from the chemicals. You may recall Bill O'Reilly last month calling for his resignation as well. As you heard, the secretary's response time is under question, as is his track record in general with the cabinet seat, not to mention his mishandling of the airlines as well. So what are the pros and cons of Pete resigning? Well, stick around and you might find out. From Autoburst Media, this is Autoconverse. Hey, we got a good show lined up for you today. Oh, well, I'm a Game of Thrones nut, so that's, that's, that's my jam. The robots are listening. The robots are listening. All right, welcome to another episode of the Autoconverse podcast, where we explore people, ideas, and technologies that influence how we are connected and the way we get around. I am Ryan Girardi. Great, as always, to be here with you. So no doubt that Pete Buttigieg's resignation from office has certainly been a controversial topic of discussion. On the one hand, some people believe that his departure will leave an unfillable void in politics. However, others argue that it could be beneficial for the future of our country and democracy as a whole. Actually, I'm just kidding. What you just heard me read was the word-for-word response that an AI-powered chatbot gave me when I asked it, what are the pros and cons of Pete Buttigieg resigning? Reality is that some people believe that he is not a leader in the transportation sector and out of touch with the people. Others argue he is focused on the wrong things, such as equity, inclusion, and ESG policy. Whatever the reason, old Pete is in the hot seat right now. Meanwhile, the AI war is heating up with AI-powered chat and search, putting Google on the lookout for the next behemoth. Microsoft is the main actor behind ChatGPT, an artificial intelligence chatbot developed by OpenAI, which launched in November of 2022. It is built on top of OpenAI's family of large language models and has been fine-tuned, which is an approach to transfer learning, using both supervised and reinforcement learning techniques. Most of what I just read was actually from an AI chatbot that I use, U.com. 
you, which I think is farther along than Microsoft is with Bing, already incorporate search into a conversation, whereas with Bing, you have to join a wait list. I've been using you.com for somewhere between six and the last 10 or 12 months, and I'm starting to use it on the show. So, you know, again, we do a bi-weekly show, the Mobility Tech and Connectivity Show, the MTC Show, and it's a live stream on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, and that is the recording sessions for these podcasts. And so what we're starting to do on the show is I go up to you.com and we, got the, we get the chat bot going and we just start asking it cool little questions. It's pretty neat, some of the stuff you can do. I mean, and you can save your conversations. You know, I, I, I go into, into you, you chat all the time and, I'm, you know, I did, for instance, when, uh, you know, when was the East Palestine train derailment as a, as a good example. You know, I was looking for how often Ford files patents, which comes up later in this in this program. So I will leave it at that for now. All right. Well, before we get carried away, how about some headlines? And what do we have today? We got a hacker cracks into Toyota's customer search tool. Uh, that was in, there was a, kind of a, a backdoor in Toyota's 360, um, uh, C360 customer relationship management, and that allowed personal data to get exposed to customers in Mexico. I normally focus on U.S. Uh, US minded uh, things that impact those of us in the U.S., uh, but this is a data breach that does affect a, uh, a, a manufacturer, if you will. And so if you are a Mexican uh, customer, a customer in Mexico with Toyota, then this is good for you to know. There's been a, Toyo- uh, a data breach. Also with Toyota, they have partnered with Yahoo on the crown to create a shopping experience, an augmented reality shopping experience that allows shoppers to really tour the, ins- the inside of the car and the outside too. But that's not terribly groundbreaking. I think getting the inside view that's we're not seeing a lot of that and augmented reality allows you to take like your phone as an example and aim it towards an object so in this case you're going to aim it at the toyota crown and then it's going to on your phone because you're typically going to use an app for this i don't know if it says what kind of app we're using Uh, but that will allow you to now interact with the vehicle inside and out spin it move around possibly touch buttons and get an idea of what those buttons do that's what an ar experience is so basically it doesn't require you to go physically to the car to shop around for it so very cool stuff here next on the list ford forms automated driving subsidiary from argo ai's remains now argo ai we haven't really brought it up on the show a whole lot but Argo was an uh, artificial intelligence. They were they were building autonomous vehicle technology, and Ford was a backer, and one other oh VW was a backer. But last year they pulled their backing out. Ford did this with Rivian too. Ford was invested into Rivian, and over the last six months they've just pulled out uh, their investments with the, with uh, with Rivian. They've done the same thing with Argo, and now they're ac- accumulating those assets. Uh, including the personnel and forming their own subsidiary called Latitude AI. And that's going to allow Ford to focus on its advanced driver assistance system known as Blue Cruise. And this is technology. When we talk about autonomous uh, vehicle technology, autonomous driving technology, uh, this is technology that's been, I think, overshadowed a little bit by introduction of electric vehicles into the marketplace. I think a, I think autonomous driving's kind of taken a back seat. Uh, for what it's worth, you know, there's five levels of autonomy, of autonomous driving. Uh, five being where it doesn't even require, I think, an operator in the car. So four would be almost fully autonomous, but an operator's in the car. Five would be fully autonomous without an operator in the car. And so right now you have uh, Tesla, Volvo, maybe, no, not Hyundai, Tesla and Volvo, maybe a little Cadillac. You got some car makers have like level one, level two technology. I think Tesla's got level three down for the most part. I don't know the nuances and the difference. 
Uh, but here's Ford again. This autonomous driving is, is where things are going. If you think it's all about EVs? I think it's about autonomous cars. Where are we? 2023, 10 years from now? I mean, that's a lot of time in the technology sector. That's a lot of time. And 10 years from now, you won't, cars probably won't have drivers in them, operators, I should say. That's my take. That's my take. So here's uh, Ford, uh, again, scrapping up Argo AI and forming Latitude AI. Uh, and that's its subsidiary. Speaking of Ford, they have patented an autonomous vehicle repossession. This is pretty, pretty cool. I was going to play some sound bits. Okay, Neil, let's jump to the automotive industry. Ford Motor Co. has filed for a patent on technology that could remotely shut off either your radio or air conditioning, lock you out of your vehicle, or even prompt it to ceaselessly beep inside the cabin if you don't make your car payments right. on time. This is extremely alarming obviously it's just a patent for now but the as you dig deeper into this patent you keep finding more and more absurd cases for it if the vehicle has like semi-autonomous or autonomous driving it could literally drive your car to the repo lot or to the junkyard if it doesn't have good resale value it's very interesting obviously it's just a patent but what was like your first reaction when you heard this news uh yeah freaky dystopian everything they warned us about with connected cars <laughs> there are some amazing things about self driving vehicles and all the software that's being put into cars. I know you love how, you know, the this update uh, this update that Tesla can issue over the software. Yeah. But this kind of shows the downsides in that I, I read this article in The Verge and it was a really good point. He was like, you cars offer freedom, right? Like you get a car when you're a kid, yeah. you're like, this is freedom. <laughs> I don't have to listen to anybody. Every it's all just happening in my car. No one can like kind of peek in me and I can get away from my parents. And the idea of a connected car car like kind of eliminates the entire yeah. concept of freedom in cars right. so that was that was a really interesting point that it I thought. is it also just speaks to the broader subscriptionification of cars that's like premiumization but I okay. it up subscriptionification six out of ten where I think Tesla yeah did kind of start it with their you can buy software updates that improve the performance of the vehicle the biggest one being self-driving yeah. capabilities but BMW last year rolled out an $18 a month subscription for heated seats so it is it almost is the premiumization too of cars where if you want these additional features you can pay for them and it's just it's it's so crazy i can't imagine growing up with just like the muscle cars of old and now today you're like paying to access features of your car it yeah. must be really jarring it's a different uh it's a different era for sure but this industry also like the repo industry also has a bad reputation as being super predatory anyway so the fact that they can just get tell your car to drive itself to the lot is just raising all kinds of alarms. Ford responded and they were like, look, we uh, we do patents all the time. We do like three per day. Yeah. Don't worry about it. We have no plans to use it, but you can't help think in the back of your mind that this is where the car industry is going. Yeah. And it comes at a time when people are really falling behind on their payments too. So it's like all too real for people. Yeah. Uh, I think that I read this Bloomberg article that said that Americans are falling behind on their car payments at a higher rate now than in 2009. Yeah. So we talked about the premiumization of the economy and this is what happens at the other end when debt is piling up and the fact that now there's <laughs> your car can drive itself yeah. to the freaking junkyard is a little freaky i know i i do just want to touch on the point of ford i i wanted to quiz you on how many patents <laughs> i read a day <laughs> sorry but dang it yeah so ford <laughs> is granted they were granted 1342 patents last year so yeah f even though that this particular one kind of made headlines it does seem like ford files so many patents it's it is it is more than three but did you read it like someone put a lot of effort into right. thinking about this right. and i don't think ford is the only car company that is actively thinking about this right so, so it is yeah maybe it's I, a little freaky you I'm, get you get caught on your uh, car behind on your car payments and now you're sweating because they turned off the ac yeah <laughs> that's my nightmare literally. i read all of the different lists about what could possibly happen but my nightmare is just driving on the highway in August, 95 degrees, and you're back, no air, no AC, and your back is just sticking to the sweat, seat, sweat swamp, pouring down your face. Swampy. That is the yeah. worst. I'd rather have my car drive itself to the junkyard. <laughs> That's funny. Ugh. Speaking of Ford, this is pretty cool. They have purchased over 9,000 
battery electric vehicles. This is going to uh, pan out uh, uh, towards the end of 2023. And they also purchased charging stations, I believe. If that's in here. Yeah, these are commercial off-the-shelf BEVs and 14,000 charging stations. And these will be used to establish a nationwide infrastructure uh, for the Postal Service called the Electrical Vehicle Supply Equipment Inventory. So big investment by the Postal Service and with uh, Ford, a U.S. company. Good for the U.S., good for, good for consumers. Uh, but yeah, another development there by Ford. So Ford is big in the news. What else do we have? BMW launches a fleet of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And I think they've partnered with Toyota. Let's see, the iX5 cell sourced from Toyota has a top speed of 112 miles per hour. Uh, the car stores hydrogen in two tanks, can be filled up in three to four minutes, has a range of over 300 miles. And BMW describes hydrogen as a versatile energy source that has a key role to play in the energy transition process and therefore in climate protection. So pretty cool. I've tried my best to hit on hydrogen fuel cell technology. Toyota uh, and I think Hyundai really been leading the way on that. So uh, here we have BMW getting in the ring, obviously partnering with Toyota. Coming up. That's why I regret buying solar panels in America. Hi there. In case you live in the U.S. and are looking to buy solar panels, I have something really important to tell you. You shouldn't. You should not buy solar panels in case you have a home in the U.S. And if you're wondering why, it's because right now, you can actually have the U.S. government buy solar panels for you. No, I'm not joking. Our government recently released a special solar stimulus program. And with the goal to help stop global warming, Americans will be able to get a complete solar system from our government at absolutely no net cost. And that way, go solar with little to no investment whatsoever. All you need to do is simply click the button below this video to take a quick survey our government provided and by the end you'll be qualified. So please, don't spend your own money on solar panels like I did and click the button below this video now to qualify for this special program and have the U.S. government buy solar panels for you. In a few moments, I'm going to play you highlights of my interview with the purveyor of Ask Auto, an interactive communication platform developed by the company In Search X. He's been on the podcast a few times, and if you are a regular listener, then you may recognize his name, Eric Brown. We'll be talking about how his AI technology is helping consumers with some of their automotive needs. Before we do, though, I have an important message for you about sourcing your own energy. Hey folks, before we continue, I'd like to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Apricot Solar. As a listener of this podcast, you hear me talking about rising demand for electricity. And with an increase in demand, you can count on price increases. One way to combat this price hike is with energy independence by producing your own electricity. And one of the best ways to produce your own electricity at home is with solar energy. But not just any home solar energy system. The best way to go is with Apricot Solar. We experience the benefits of solar daily. They are real and undeniable. And even though it's been decades since its invention, there's still a lot of misinformation surrounding solar energy. As an example, the clip you heard me play earlier about solar costing you nothing was from a TikTok channel, and it is misleading. Apricot is here to change that. And that is why Apricot Solar wants homeowners to experience just how affordable and logical solar can be. From custom solutions to installation to financing, Apricot is your leading full-service solar provider. And we currently serve customers in almost every state, including but not limited to California, Nevada, Arizona, Texas, Florida, Colorado, Utah, Illinois, Pennsylvania, and many others. Together with homeowners, Apricot is working to make this clean energy source mainstream, saving you big dollars in the process. We believe the time is finally here to do energy differently. We have to be smarter. There is a better way, and more and more people are understanding that it is right in front of us. At Apricot, solar is finally simple. We want your solar switch to be as smooth and seamless as possible. We are here to answer your questions 
and a visit to your home is how we set a plan that makes the most sense for you and your family. You do not get just solar panels. With Apricot, you receive a complete net zero home system with service to match. Every component is designed to work together perfectly. From those first rays of sunlight hitting your roof to flicking on your light switch. Find out more by going to autoconverse.com forward slash solar or text the keyword solar to 855-766-7585 and get started today. You will be glad that you did. All right, so on to my interview with Eric Brown. The highlights we have for you are from my conversation with him on the MTC show in December of last year, 2022, where he is announcing a new capability with his technology where it will help car owners get insurance quotes from competing companies. Here he explains how it is better to go Here he explains how it is better to go to someone that you want to talk with as opposed to expecting them to come to you, which is what his software is designed to do around your automotive needs. And this is what is changing with shopping. And Ask Auto, he believes, has, this is what is changing with shopping. And Ask Auto, he believes, has a future for his AI with auto shoppers. Have a listen. And now for our feature presentation. The internet uh, and, and really advertising as a whole is sort of organized around this concept that I, you know, I'm going to jump up and down and throw balloons and try to get somebody across the hallway to do what you're referencing, Ryan, trying to get somebody come talk to me, come to my website. And then when you get here, figure out my website and do a search and find the, find the products that you want. And quite frankly, it's easier uh, to engage if you go across the hall yourself and say to the consumer, what do you want? Great. I'll be right back. I'll bring that. I'll bring that to you. So the, the person that you're engaging isn't changing anything about their lifestyle, right? They, they can continue uh, with whatever they were engaged in. They just tell you, Here, here's what I need. Go find it for me. And, you know, that that inversion, if you will, is happening all around this, whether it's Amazon delivering products to us instead of us driving to the store and then searching the store for it. Uh, it's simply telling Amazon, here's what I'd like, and then they bring it to us. Whether it's, you know, the grocery store delivering to us, it's our food food coming to us. More and more, we're inverting the model, you know, where we want we want to say to the world, here's what I need. Here's what I want. Please bring it to me. And that's where we get the term concierge. And yep. now that's expanding uh, into right. insurance quotes. I have the I have the website up. I'll, I'll be able to bring that up while you're talking. But why don't you go ahead and introduce the new evolution, your big news that you have to share? Yeah, so at the heart of our technology has always been uh, what we refer to as a perpetual search engine, where, again, it's that thing, hey, tell auto, ask auto, uh, you know, tell auto what you need. And in the background, we'll perpetually be sourcing, you know, the cloud, which is, you know, basically all the content on every website is hosted in the cloud. It's a database now. Websites are created through from databases via APIs. And so we essentially, you know, uh, link into that. And then are constantly reviewing, um, you know, initially started with car shopping, the cars in the inventory that are best aligned with your needs and, and you know, your stated preferences. Uh, and then also included uh, you know, the best offers to buy the vehicle that you may be, you know, you own currently. And then the same thing is true, you know, with the insurance industry, with the service industry, with the auto warranty industry, with the refinance industry, they all have APIs. And so essentially, what a consumer can do is simply input their license plate. Uh, we then, that tells us what vehicle you own. And then we can start monitoring those and watching and perpetually searching those APIs for opportunities for savings uh, for, for the consumer. So instead of you having to bounce around the internet and visit multiple websites. And so, for example, we have 50 uh, some insurance companies in here. You know, we can constantly be querying those 50 insurance companies for, for the, re- the best rates for you and it relates to insurance, but the same thing's true with, you know, extended service for your car, parts for your car, uh, service offers, oil changes, all those things. Uh, you can just simply set it and forget it. Uh, and then we'll send you alerts or notifications when, um, you know, something that you should be aware of it is brought, you know, it should be brought to your attention. So uh, while so, you're explaining this, I'm, I'm being reminded of a service from kind of throwback from maybe, early 2000s, I think it was called Lending Tree. 
And I think mm. the whole idea of lending tree was make yeah. the banks yeah. compete for you. Is, is that, do I have that correct? That's true, so, except the difference here is that you, you would go to Lending Tree's website, you would fill out all this information, and then you'd start getting barraged with email and phone and, and all of these things where we act as the shield, if you will, between the consumer and all of those folks. Uh, and we simply say, hey, tell us, what, tell us about yourself. We'll be monitoring you know, uh, the lenders in that, in that example for you. And then when we find a great offer, something that's you know, outside of the norm, we'll alert you to that, right? Or if you have an immediate need, then we'll bring you, you know, multiple offers and let you choose from that. It, it doesn't other than that there's already exists in the internet, the piping to connect databases uh, to websites. Uh, and so we simply said, well, gee, you know, rather than making a consumer visit, like, uh, you know, according to a lot of research out there, the average consumer will visit 28 websites uh, on their course of uh, finding a car. Well, all those websites are all hosted in the same place. What if we just curate all of that content uh, into one data stream to the consumer and put a filter on the front of that too so we only alert the consumer what's relevant in those 28 websites uh, relevant to them so they're not having to bounce around the internet. Just like I'm not having to bounce around 20 stores, I can go to one, say what I want, and have it come to me. So it's the same thing. You know, Instead of visiting 28 online stores and then doing this search here and this search here and maybe filling out multiple forms and you know i can just tell the machine you know what i want uh and shield myself uh until i'm ready to say hey that's the car ready to buy i'm going to schedule time to go go in and buy that car or i'm or i'm going to accept that insurance offer uh and then that those protocols kick in at that point no it's 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 both it varies a little bit by sort of the, the sector we're in, but uh, you know, each most of the insurance companies, and if not, they're actively building them now. Have automated systems now for generating insurance quotes. Uh, some of them go through, uh, like this one you're showing, is covered as a partner of ours, and and they actually are uh, managing uh, those APIs again for multiple insurance companies. So that allows us to go through one channel. But we also have other insurance companies where we're, you know, connected directly to them. Okay. Yeah. Great. It just depends so, on the capabilities of the insurance company uh, or the bank or the warranty company or the service company, uh, et cetera. Or, and also another thing we, we, we do all the time, too, is our safety recalls. So there are about 15 to 20 of the cars on the road at any given time have a safety issue that the government has said, hey, this, this needs to be fixed. And, and this literally, in many cases, penalizing the manufacturer for, for it and, and to get it fixed. And so uh, we're constantly looking at the vehicles that your owns for those recalls. And we will notify them if their vehicle pops up on, on one of the, you know, re the recall list. So if I'm already an Ask Auto user and already registered, will I have access to the insurance quotes for that same account or do i have to go to this site and create a new account no you'll have access uh, to the through your ask auto account okay yeah. now there are uh, depending on what you share with us in ask auto account the insurance company may ask additional like we don't have your driver's license information some insurance companies require that to to, to, to have a bindable quote for example others right. will give you an estimate and then you can dive into more detail if you want to go forward that's actually what my next question was, is what information does the consumer need to provide Ask Auto to get quotes from different uh, pr uh, providers? Yeah. So if they just provide us a license plate um, uh, and, and an address, then we, we, we can share that out uh, with their permission, of course, to get additional uh, quotes on their insurance. The, they won't necessarily always be bindable. In other words, when you go to say, hey, I'm interested in this offer from, from Safeco, then there may be additional information just to confirm uh, the accuracy of the information that was provided in the first place. Okay, so my uh, my yeah, residential right, address. I can, I can make up a name and address, pull it out of the phone book and you generate insurance quotes. So the insurance company at some point, because it is a legal relationship, has to validate that information. Right. And everybody ways to do that. Your the address you provide is just because rates vary based off of your geographic yeah. location. Yeah. The license plate. What does that do? What does that do? It's your the license identity? plate tells us uh, a lot. We can convert into the VIN of the vehicle, so you can okay. share your VIN as well if you know that. But 
most people are more likely another to license, license plate than yeah. is your VIN. And then that VIN tells us what car it is, what age it is, you know, uh, you know, what kind of transmission it has, all of those kinds of things. It's it's the social security number of the vehicle, uh, essentially. And then that converts the, in the information that the insurance companies can utilize. Okay. Or the warranty companies or any, any number of partners. They're, that's how we'd know whether there's a recall. The manufacturers take the vehicle identification number, the VIN, V-I-N, uh, and, you know, and provide it to the government. Uh, so then they start looking for those cars. So that's, that's another thing you, you, you can get vehicle, you can get recall alerts on Correct. your vehicle specifically now through ask auto. Correct. That's yeah. great. That's really yeah. great. And that's going to be even non-safety recalls. Some of the, the. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So people basically have... we have a variety of people that we're pinging again, you know, through, through the APIs. Uh, and then when, when, you know, when the flag goes up, then we notify the consumer that, that there's an alert on their vehicle. Yeah. And the nice thing for the consumer is it's all happening in the background. Every, you know, nothing's changed until something changes. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah be, people don't realize how many non-safety recalls that can, that can occur in your car at any time. You can have a 10 year old car that suddenly has a recall on it, but you wouldn't know it unless you went to your local dealer for service and then they would look it up. But I think something like 70% of car owners go, go to a non-licensed franchise dealer for service. Right. Right. Um, so that's a lot of cars out there that wouldn't know. So. Well, and, and it's interesting you bring that up because that's also where, uh, so we ask autos now sort of, um, uh, I'm trying to think the right word, but we're, we're, we're being engaged as a, a loyalty program as well. So take a, a service company or a, a, a dealership. We just had our first few this week, actually, they can upload their customer uh, database and we generate an ask auto account, send it out to the consumer and let them know that, Hey, they're, they're, Membership in Ask Auto has been sponsored by, you know, by the dealership or by their their service provider, um, and then they can opt in at that point to activate their alerts uh, around around their vehicles. Very good. And I'm going to show up here, folks. I'll put this in the live chat. If you go to autoconverse.com forward slash Ask Auto, that will bring you to this coming page on the on the website right here, mm -hmm. and you can activate your Ask Auto Shield. Uh, or or just activate your account. And when you do that, you're going to actually help support this podcast by doing that. So again, go to Ask Auto. I'm sorry, go to autoconverse.com forward slash Ask Auto. I'll put that in the live chat for everyone to see, and you'll help support this podcast. Get your shield activated for free, and then you can start tapping into all these great services. It looks like we're going to need to add a page to the website for getting insurance quotes. That's yeah, so we've got a lot of updates actually underway right now um, related to that because, you know, we're, you know we, we want to be a free service to the consumer that it's all things auto, if you will. And it's just 24-7, 365 in the background, you know, watching uh, watching the Internet, if you will, for things relevant to their vehicle. Well, that is a wrap. Thanks again for tuning in. Remember to text the keyword AutoConverse to 855-766-7585 if you want to uh, start receiving SMS alerts from us around the show and the podcast. We'll send you a link to subscribe to our podcast and also get subscribed to our YouTube channel. And be sure also to text the keyword SOLAR to the same number, 855-766-7585 if you want to look into solar power for your home or B, how to get into the residential solar business and make some serious money while helping people enhance their lives with solar power. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Ciao. This is Audiburst Media.